There happens to be 11 different sectors specific to investing, and they range from consumer discretionary, energy, healthcare, technology, and seven others that I'll be speaking to. But there are only two sectors as a whole that outperform the S&P 500 over the past 10 years. I often get questions about purely diversified ETF, so I figured I would provide the top performing ETF by sector based on the best five-year total performance. And I admit that I did exclude all ETF whose main strategy was to be a leveraged ETF. But before jumping into the list, I do have a question for you. If you had only the option of two different ETF with a similar strategy, and you could choose only one, which would it be and how would you decide? Let's say we have a fictitious ETF that has a total average return over the past 10 years of 13%, and the second ETF has a total average return of 12%. But here's where it gets tricky. The first one has an expense ratio of an incredible 2%, and the second one has an expense ratio of only 0%. Which of these two would give you the highest return over the past 10 years? And the answer is the first ETF with a total average return of 13%. And the reason that's the case is because an ETF's total return takes into account the expenses being taken out and all dividends are being reinvested. I often state that in my videos, but it was important to illustrate it since I continue to get a lot of questions on that topic. And with that covered, let's get started on the best ETF by sector based on the best total average five-year return. The first sector I'll cover is energy, where it's had an annual return of 4.83% over the past 10 years. And during its best year, energy was up 65.7%. And on its worst year, it was down at negative 34.9%. Please keep in mind that this is the total sector performance, and the top companies within a sector perform much better than this. And the best performing ETF in the energy sector is Invesco Solar ETF, where its top 15 holdings are in companies like First Solar, Enphase Energy, and Solar Edge Technologies. I don't believe these are common household names to many of us, but these companies have been overperforming over the past decade. The strategy of this ETF is unique in that it focuses on a subsection of the energy sector with its focus on solar. And as for performance, this ETF is trading at $56.43 and it's down negative 23.6% year to date, but it's up 22.1% for an annualized return for five years, which is substantially higher than its category average of 3.77%. I'm not going to provide too much commentary on each of these ETFs since I have so many to cover, but I will say that I've had this ETF for several years and so far it's treated my portfolio well and it's given a little extra diversity. The next sector is utility where it's had an annual return of 8.86%, which is still below the S&P 500 over the past 10 years. And as you can see, its best year was less than the S&P, but its worst year had a better outcome than the S&P 500. And the best performing ETF for utilities is Global X US Infrastructure Development ETF, where the strategy is to focus on domestic infrastructure companies that have over 50% of their sales in the US. And by looking at the top holdings, it has several companies that are in construction, farming, and supply chain. As of today, it's trading at $31.42 with a strong year-to-date of 18.8%, and the five-year is at an annualized 13.8%. This ETF wasn't even on my radar until researching this video, and now that I have, it's going to be on my shortlist to watch moving forward. And a big thanks to today's sponsor, Biostem Technologies, where they are exploring the future of regenerative medicine, where they'd like to share with you more about their mission. Biotechnology companies continue to strive to develop breakthrough drugs and treatments that can radically improve medical care and human well-being. Amidst the biotech sector's rapid advancements, Biostem stands out as an innovator within their niche. Their mission? To lead in the discovery, development, and production of cutting-edge regenerative medicine. They've garnered the trust of industry giants and renowned clients, a testament to their expertise. Biostem manufactures perinatal tissue allografts, focused on diabetic and surgical wound care. Essentially, it's using one's own body and innate biology to repair and restore damaged tissue and wounds, resulting in speedier healing with reduced pain. Their flagship product, Bendahe, is a game changer in wound care, and this is possible due to Biostem's proprietary bioretain processing method. With market projections of a 9.4% CAGR for the next four years, Biostem is strategically positioned for long-term success. 
To sum it up, Biostem Technologies, Inc. is at the forefront of regenerative medicine. And if you'd like to learn more about Biostem and what they're working on, I have a link in the description below. The next sector is communication services, where it's had an annual return of 6.9%, where its best and worst years are very similar to the S&P 500. As for the best performing ETF for the sector, it's First Trust Index Next G ETF, where its strategy is to index against global equities related to next generation digital cellular technologies. In some ways, I do feel that this is a bit of a cheat for the sector since it is focused on technology within communications, but I'm going to keep with how the sectors are framed. And here's a quick snapshot of the top 15 holdings to give insight into what it's driving the growth. And once again, I feel like this is a bit of a cheat since it does include Nvidia, Intel, and Samsung. But it is nice to see that the weights are all low and there are more communication specific companies in the list. This ETF is trading today at $70.10, where it's up 15.2% year to date and only 9.01% over five years. This fund is nearly two times better than the sector average, but I honestly feel like it's getting a lot of help from its technology holdings. Still, it does offer some diversity as a sector-focused ETF. The next sector to cover is real estate, where the annual return over the past 10 years is 7.66%, where its best year surpassed the S&P 500 by nearly 14%, and its worst year was also much worse by over 5%. And the top ETF for this sector is Pacer Industrial Real Estate, where its strategy is straightforward, where at least 85% of their revenue is in industrial real estate activities. And in looking at the top holdings, they they have a lot of storage companies, warehouses, and industrial real estate. With regards to real estate exposure, those are some of the safer areas to be in. However, I have to state that I do have concerns with investing in commercial real estate in general, but mostly in retail and office space. But once again, that's purely my opinion. As for the performance, the ETF is trading at $38.05, and it's up only 3.7% year to date, and up 10.54% over five years. And you'll notice that the dividend is a healthy 2.86%, but please remember that the total return assumes that the dividend is being reinvested, and it takes that into account. Before moving on, I have a favor to ask of you. If you like my content, I'd greatly appreciate it if you consider pressing the like button so my content here on YouTube can grow. And better yet, I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing so you can be up to date with all of my latest content. I'll move on to the next sector of consumer staples that had an annual 10-year return of 9.13%. And its best year is lower than the S&P 500, but its worst year is also much, much better by over 22%. I also want to call out that this sector is one of the top two sectors that have outperformed the S&P 500 over the past 10 years, which makes this sector especially beneficial for potential downturns in the economy. And the top ETF for consumer staples is iShare U.S. Consumer Staples ETF, which has a strategy of having mostly domestic manufacturers of consumer goods, while excluding consumer services, where some of the top holdings include P&G, Pepsi, and Coca-Cola. In fact, most every company on here are big name brands that most of us see almost on a daily basis. People always need food, and this sector proves that it can weather the downslides better than most. With regards to performance, this ETF trades at $195.75, and it's down negative 3.51% year to date, and it's up 12.6% over five years. This ETF and sector are struggling year to date, and I believe that that has a lot to do with our inflation numbers slowly coming down which hurts the top line sales of all of these brands, at least in the short term. But once inflation begins to stabilize, I'll expect this ETF to quickly bounce back. And the next sector is materials, which has had an average 10 year return of 9.65%, where its best year is over 16% better than the S&P 500, but its worst year was about negative 8% below the same index. And the top ETF for materials has been iShares US Home Construction ETF, where its strategy is to index against the US home building industry where it tends to be cyclical in nature. Within its top holdings, it focuses primarily on companies like Home Depot, Sherwin-Williams, and Lowe's. And with the interest rates being as high as they are, people are staying in their homes longer and doing their own renovations and updates to their own home. In addition, with the supply of houses being so low, Builders are having to extend themselves and are continuing to build to meet the existing demand. So I see this ETF continuing with a decent track. As of today, this ETF is trading at $85.17. It's up 40.1% year to date and up 18.5% over five years. For the reasons that I had mentioned earlier, this ETF is doing well year to date, and I believe that it has legs to do well for quite a while. I'll follow that up with the sector of industrial, which had a 10 year average of 11.5%, where the best and worst year 
years swung slightly higher and worse than the S&P 500. Where the top ETF for the sector is First Trust RBA American Industrial Renaissance, which has a strategy of a multi-factor index of equities that can benefit from the potential regain in market share of U.S. industrial and community banking sector. Where firms must have a positive 12-month forward earning consensus to be on the list. And when looking at the top holdings, there are a lot of industrial and manufacturing firms that aren't common to most of us, like Sterling Infrastructure, which is a construction company focused on building infrastructure for transportation, buildings, and technology-focused data centers and DCs. And as of today, this ETF is trading at $53.57, up 21.1% year-to-date, and 13.9% over five years. I see this ETF as a mixed bag, which is both good and bad. The commercial side may hurt in the short term, but with the government spending and infrastructure, along with the focus on technology clients and construction, it could give it some very strong growth over time. And the next sector is financial services, which has had a 10-year return of 10.2%, where its best year was on par with the S&P, but its worst year is exceptionally worse at a negative 55.3%. And for this sector, the best ETF is SPDR, S&P Capital Markets ETF, which has a strategy of focusing on companies that focus on securities, brokers, and dealers, asset managers, and commodity exchanges. And I'll quickly put up the top holdings to give you an understanding of the type of companies in this portfolio. And they range from Morningstar all the way up to Robinhood. It currently trades at $89.98 with a year-to-date of 14.6% and a five-year of 11.8%. Not a whole lot to add to this ETF, as it's pretty straightforward. But overall, I am not in love with the sector's overall worst performance compared to the S&P 500. So it's something for all of us to just keep in mind. The next sector is healthcare, which has had a 10-year return of 12.2% where its best year and worst years outperform the S&P 500 with conviction. And the best healthcare ETF is Healthcare Select Sector SPDR Fund, which has a strategy of indexing to the U.S. healthcare companies and medical manufacturers. And when you look at the top holdings, they are the big names that you would expect in healthcare, ranging from United Health Group, J&J, Pfizer, and Medtronic. This ETF is trading today at $133.04, and it's down negative 2% year-to-date, but it's up 9.3% over five years. I admit that this was yet another ETF that wasn't even on my radar previously, but I'm gonna add this to my mix because I don't see any foreseeable downside betting on the healthcare companies over the long term. I'll move on to the next sector of consumer discretionary with a 10-year average of 12.8%, and it's also one of the top two sectors that outperformed the S&P 500 over 10 years, where its best year was quite a bit better than the index and its worst year was on par. And the best consumer discretionary fund is Fidelity MS CI Consumer Discretionary Index ETF, where its strategy is to index to companies like apparel retailers, hotels, cruise lines, and automakers. The fund is trading today at $75.09, and it's up 30.1% year-to-date and 11.4% over five years. And in looking at the top holdings, companies like Amazon overlap with tech, Home Depot overlaps with the materials sector, but many of the names are more unique to the consumer discretionary. I like how this fund has performed and how the sector has done well. My only concern is that if we have recessionary pressures, then discretionary funds may become much less, especially with inflation layered on top of everything else. And the 11th sector is technology, which has an average tenure of 20.4% and is clearly the top sector for performance. Where its best year was double the S&P 500, but its worst year was about negative 6% worse. And the top technology fund is Vanek Semiconductor ETF, where its strategy is to track the performances of the top 25 largest U.S. companies that produce semiconductors. The fund is trading today at $151.54 and is up 47.2% year-to-date and up 24.6% over five years. And in looking at the top holdings, there's really no surprises with NVIDIA, TSMC, Intel, and Broadcom. This was an ETF that I spotted a few years back and I've managed to ride the AI wave with this fund and several others. But if you're looking for general ETFs that provide a broad grouping across several different sectors, then I highly suggest that you check out this video right over here.